Good afternoon, my name is Michaela McQueen and I'm Proposals Engineer for Howden Compressors. My background is in Chemical Engineering, which I studied and received my degree from Strathclyde Uni. Engineering wasn't my first career choice. When I was growing up, I was surrounded by animals. We had birds, rabbits and fish. Uh, I really wanted to become a vet, however, I have the tendency to become emotionally attached to animals, so I knew this wouldn't be the right career choice for me. From an early age, I was teaching my three-year-old sister maths. I used to do the sums in my wardrobe door with chalk and ask her to answer them. I've always had an interest in maths and in fourth year I did my work experience at my primary school and this was a great experience for me. I taught the primary two kids maths and English. In doing so I learned valuable skills which have helped me in my career today and proved that a career in teaching would be a good choice for me. Also in my sixth year I helped tutor my now fiancé higher maths which resulted in him getting an A and at the same time I studied advanced higher maths. This verified my desire to go into teaching. My maths teacher even told me that I had to come back to the high school when he retired so I could take over his job. Teaching was my main ambition until my mum mentioned off the cuff one day that I should consider a degree in something other than teaching in case I didn't like teaching when I got into it. When I started to think about what I could do in uni, the uncertainty began to surface about teaching from the advice my mum gave me. I looked through prospectuses from different unis to see what degrees would be best suited to the STEM subjects I took throughout high school. These were maths, physics and chemistry. Engineering kept coming out on top as I read more into it. I was surprised at the variety of career paths within engineering. Knowing that if it didn't work out, I could do a one-year conversion course and become a teacher. I finalised in chemical engineering as a discipline. The degree sounded very interesting. It covered many subjects related to other engineering backgrounds and would allow me to go into many different industries, such as oil and gas, food manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, plastics and metal manufacturing. This career choice came as a surprise to me as I didn't have an incline to go into engineering and there were no engineering role models in my family. I come from a working class family, my dad was a coal miner and now drives HGV lorries and my mum works in a factory. I was the first in my immediate family to go to uni and I have since become a role model for other members of my family to go to uni. One of my little cousins who lived in Manchester moved up to Glasgow to study engineering at Strathclyde after hearing about my degree and she now works in a Bolivian oil rig. Women made up approximately 10% of the undergraduates studying chemical engineering when I started and by the time I graduated the number of females in my year had reduced drastically. Many of them had left in the first year which is why I would encourage you to review the prospectuses in detail to ensure that you pick the right course for you. Many of the women in my course had parents or other family members in an engineering background so I felt I was taking a leap of faith in myself for picking something new and challenging. After four years studying at Strathclyde I graduated and got my first engineering job down near London. I worked as a sales and proposals engineer for a company which designed and manufactured flare systems for oil and gas platforms and chemical plants such as the one in Grangemouth. There was one other female engineer in my office. As the company was a small firm, um, there was only 14 employees, the number of females including administrators made up almost half of the workforce. Since engineering is normally perceived as a male oriented industry, this was very unusual and not what I was expecting, particularly at such a small firm. My job consisted of using a design tool to work out the size of the flare tip required to safely burn excess gas in the case of an emergency. As part of the proposal process, I also needed to go out to various suppliers and source pricing so that I could provide a competitive offer to our customers for the products they needed. In addition, my favourite part of the job, and I think this is because it related the most to my degree, was using a piece of software called FlareSim to calculate the heat radiation produced at different parts of the platform or site where the flare tip would be installed. This was used to ensure that the flare stack was tall enough to prevent personnel being burnt from the intense heat radiation. My very first order was for an oil platform located offshore near Norway. 
uh, winning this contract gave me the confidence I needed and gave me a bit of a reputation in my first company as I was the first person to sell a spare spool piece for the flare tip. A spool piece is a tube of metal that stops corrosion of the flare boom, which is a pipe for safe combustion of excess processed hydrocarbons. The next contract I won, I managed to persuade a well-known oil and gas company to buy four flare tips plus four spares and four anti-corrosion spool pieces. But the contract I'm most proud of from my previous job and the one which I like to tell my Scottish friends and family about is that I designed one of the flare stacks in Grangemouth Refinery. This flare stack will be in operation in the ethylene plant in Grangemouth for the next 20 plus years. Uh, during my 18 months working with the company, I was able to travel to several European countries for meetings with clients at their offices. I was also able to travel to South Korea for six days when we took part in an exhibition. This was very challenging for me as I'm so fussy with food, but I survived uh, during my time working for the company, I also secured over £1.5 million worth of orders. After 18 months working down south, an opportunity came up in Howden and I applied. My interview took place on the Good Friday in 2015 and I was advised that the second interview would take place over Skype. I drove back down south on Easter Monday expecting to hear about a second interview at some point that week. However, I got a call on the Tuesday to say that I was a successful candidate based on my first interview. I spent the next two weeks preparing for my move back to Scotland. During my 18 months living in England, I've developed from a shy, self-doubting woman into a more confident person and believed more in myself. I've learnt that believing in yourself makes others believe in you. This didn't come natural to me and being truthful, I strugg still struggle at times, but from being successful with winning orders has given me the belief that I'm good at what I do. I believe that spending time working away from home helped me become more of an independent woman and allowed me to overcome my fear of going to new places and not knowing anyone. When I started at Howden, I was the only woman in the proposals department sharing the office with five other engineers. This didn't bother me though as I was more of a tomboy when I was growing up and my best friend is male so I've always been comfortable around men. For women who have not grown up surrounded by men then this could be a daunting experience but this should not stop you from wanting be to become an engineer. In my experience every male, male colleague did what they could to make me feel welcome and were also always available to answer any questions I had. Even now, after being there five years, the team are always helpful and look out for me. Now that there is a team of 20 and still women are in the minority, there's only two female engineers. My current role consists of creating a proposal for turbo blowers which can be used in many different applications. These blowers are used in petrochemical plants to recover silver from a chemical process. Uh, blowers are also used in wastewater industry where air is blown into the wastewater and this helps clean the water. They can also be used in the food and drink industry, for example, in industrial plants where they use yeast for making bread and beer. I review and input data from a customer specification such as flow rate of air, temperature and pressure and use a selection tool to select the most appropriate machine for the process needs. When I know the size of the machine, I create data sheets for all different pieces of equipment such as the motors, silencers, acoustic enclosures, coolers, filters, etc. and send to suppliers for quotes. As soon as I have the costs, I determine the sale price of the product. I then create a quote for the customer at, that provides details of the equipment we are offering as well as our price and delivery time. Once we send the quote to our customer, they normally come back with technical questions which often invite me to discuss with them at their offices. Being at Howden has allowed me to travel more of the world, most recently to Mumbai in India and to back to South Korea, but it's not all glamorous. As being busy with client meetings, I have limited time to see many of the tourist attractions and the places I have visited. To date, I have secured over £14 million worth of orders and hope to continue to bring many exciting opportunities into Howden. The part I love most about the job is when we win an order. I can get involved in the kickoff meeting and the, with the client and help answer any questions the engineering team have throughout the manufacturing process. 
Also at the end of manufacturing, I can see the completed equipment in our Renfrew factory. It makes me proud to work here and gives me a sense of accomplishment when I can show my friends and family pictures of the equipment I have sold. I feel that in my time working with Howden, I have developed more skills such as how to write up specifications for different types of equipment and it has allowed me to learn more about other engineering disciplines including mechanical, electrical and instrumentation. I have grown to learn that working as a proposals engineer has allowed me to be involved in various aspects of the business and helps build relationships with clients all over the world. We are the people they go to when they need technical information on equipment that they are looking to purchase. Now I have been able to see a lot more of engineering, I would say to everyone that they should try to look at different disciplines and career opportunities within engineering. If possible, try to get a visit to an engineering company if you don't have any role models. I feel that if I were invited to take part in Women in Engineering Day when I was in high school, I believe this would have been a great push for me to pick a career in engineering. Over the last 11 years between working at Howden and take Talking to my fiancé who has a background in electrical and mechanical engineering, there are many opportunities when you choose an engineering career. Engineering isn't always about getting your hands dirty. It can involve helping keep people safe, improving quality of life, keeping the electricity flowing into people's homes, getting food onto tables and even keeping people alive. I would like to thank Emma as our managing director over the past three years. She was allowed me to realise that being a woman in engineering is a great achievement and has helped re-emphasise if you put your mind to it then we can all achieve the same if not more than our male colleagues. I hope this has inspired some of you to consider engineering as a career. If any of you have any questions I'd love to answer them for you but please be gentle as this is the first time I've done something like this. Thank you!